Hi, Morgan here for Infinity, and today I'm gonna to make a mallet. You wanna make a mallet? Let's make a mallet. Ah, the Humble Joiner's Mallet. A staple in pretty much every wood shop ever. Some folks get real fancy with it, using rare hardwoods and complicated assembly processes with tendons and wedges, and it, it, it's a lot. Um, and their primary function is to, to whack stuff. Whack. Either way, if you work with wood, you still need one. And I designed one you can cut out with your CNC in no time flat. It looks nice and it's super easy to assemble. Let's take a look at how it's designed. The whole thing's in three parts that fit together like Legos, basically. Rather than making a separate handle that fits into the head, I made the handle and the center section of the head in one solid piece. And the rest of the head is in just two parts, one on each side of the center, like a sandwich. A delicious wooden sandwich. And rather than just a simple profile cutout that I'd have to wrestle with to keep everything aligned while gluing it up, the side parts are relief cut with pins that fit snugly into the corresponding cavities cut into the centerpiece. And that just makes assembling these three parts way easier, eliminates the need for flush trimming, and minimizes sanding time. The pins on the outside parts, the bread of the sandwich, if you will, are 0.005 inches smaller in diameter than the cavities in the centerpieces. This allows them to easily seat in those cavities without any discernible play. Also centered in both side parts are 3 8 inch deep cavities where I pour in some just regular old BBs to add some weight to it and a little bit of wood glue just to keep them from rattling around in there. Okay, now that we're familiar with the design, let's get into tool pathing. There's an additional slight level of complexity to this because I added engravings to the outside of the side parts. Since both sides of those parts are machined, I had to give a little bit of thought to how I was gonna lay everything out, and here's what I came up with. First, I imported a vector of all the parts into V-Carve, the center part with the handle and both sides of the outside parts. Both side parts were cut from the same piece, which was 12 and a half inches wide by four and seven eighths inch height and three quarters of an inch thick. I figured I'd start with the engraving, so I deleted the other vectors and centered the engraving vectors to the center of my material and join any open vectors. I selected the graphic portion to be engraved and created an engraving toolpath. I used a 90 degree V-bit, cutting 0.05 inches deep at 200 inches per minute with a plunge rate of 50 inches per minute. You may have noticed that the engraving designs appear to be upside down, and we'll get to that in a minute. Next, I toolpathed the inside of the two side parts. So I re-imported the whole design again, got rid of everything except that portion, again centered it to the material, and joined open vectors. Remember when I said the engraved designs are upside down? That's because after running the engraving toolpath, I'm gonna to flip the piece over to cut the relief pockets to expose the pins and the outer profile. So to cut the relief pocket, I'm gonna select the outer profile and the pins. When I create my pocket toolpath, VCarve knows to cut the pocket out of the negative space between those vectors. So I'm using a quarter inch diameter spiral end mill cutting an eighth of an inch deep at 150 inches per minute with a 50 inch per minute plunge rate. Then all I have to do is create a profile tool path around the outside of the vector using the same bit with the same settings, cutting to full depth and adding some tabs to stabilize the part. Once all three parts are cut out, I just separate them from the waist and fill the engraved designs with a little epoxy to make them pop. While I wait for the epoxy to cure, I'm gonna put a 3 16 round over on these handles over here on the router table. But remember, I'm going to attach those to the side pieces, so I can't round over the whole thing. So I need to be mindful of where the side pieces are going to make contact with the handle and stop right before the round over passes that mark. I just kind of eyeballed it and snuck up to it. After the epoxy is cured, I can remove the excess with a heat gun and a putty knife. Easy. Now, remember those big circular cavities between the pins? I'm going to fill those with some just regular old BBs to give this thing a little bit of weight. And to fill the negative space in between the BBs to keep them from rattling around in there, I'm gonna fill it with some wood glue. I'll do that to both side parts and then put them all together and clamp it tight. Once it's dry, I remove the clamps, scrape off any squeeze out, and route a small chamfer around the edges of the head. Now I'll give it a good sanding, and hey, it's done. And look at that, boom. Not gonna wax stuff in style. Whack. And guess what, I got a little bonus for you. So I batched out a handful of these things for WorkbenchCon last week. So when I was done making the mallets, I had a stack of what might be confused for scraps. So I glued them all together, cut one more solid piece the same size to close up the bottom, and now I have a fancy little herb planter. I just thought that was a fun little way to turn the waste into usable material. Anyway, that's the whole shebang. 
Free cut files for this project are going to be available on the Onefinity user forum. We'll put a link in the description for you. Oh, one last thing. I was thinking about this earlier today, and I've been making these videos that just I just come up with my dumb brain, and they're um, interesting to me, but they may not be the least bit interesting to you. So what do you guys want to see videos about? Um, leave a comment below, and I will do my best to work it in. I'm, after all, here for you guys. So bye for real this time.